Good morning everybody, it is Saturday and it's day five of lockdown. Now you won't be seeing this until Monday because Sunday I'm gonna have off. You've got the Sunday morning show of me in Leicester which was pre-shot so we'll be viewing this on the Monday. I've got a few jobs to do today. I wanna try and get my golf net out. Now I got this golf net um, some time ago and it's been sat in my garage but it's it's quite big and I'm not sure if Laura's gonna accept it up in the garden. It's pretty big. And also I need to find out if I've got a pump for it because it's one of those inflatable ones. But anyway, we're gonna have a little rummage through the garage today, see if I can find it and find the pump to get it inflated. Uh, see how we get on with that. I'm also gonna check in with Lee, Lee Whitaker. Now Lee is um, someone that helps me a little bit with my editing and things. He's in uh, Plymouth, he's locked down as well. He's been on my journey as well this year, or this winter so I'd like to see how he's getting on you will have seen him recently we've done um, a little course vlog at Torquay we did nine holes together so um, just be nice to catch up with him I'm also going to catch up with Dave Fuge as well Dave has been sending me through some of the videos of just a few little tips that can help you with your um, training whilst you're at home give you a few ideas of other things that you can work on also got a little tip for you today something small for you to work on uh, talking about strike strike obviously being really really key and i've got just a little tip that might be able to help you with some low point stuff as well so um we'll have a little go at that a bit later on still got my speed training to do still got my little bit of fitness to do i might even try and get a run in today i have to ask laura if i'm allowed out let's go and get some breakfast One net. Slight problem. I can't find the pump quite big isn't it might have to go into the garage to uh, see if I can find it but before I do that let's head over to Plymouth and uh, see how Lee's getting on hi Dan hi everybody else hope you're all keeping well but I think it's pretty clear after my last vlog that my putting is letting me down and that's what's letting Dan in so I'm gonna start practicing putting so I've got my putt out got some balls and I'm not gonna stop until I get a perfect putt so I could be here for a while Six and a half hours later. Give up, Dan. Wow, there you go. Um Putting's coming on lovely, Dan. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the lessons. See you when we uh, can finally get out and play golf again. Um, you still owe me two pounds seven p, Dan. So I didn't find the pump, and I don't think the pump's in there, but I did find this box. Should we have a little look inside? Oh, some delights in there. bit small that one. Not sure about that. I might have a little chip with that later. A little Cleveland Tor Action 2 iron. This is a box of like two irons and things that I've collected over the years. Oh yeah. Little Maxfly Revolutions. Probably people still using that. But... The old ping zing. Anyone still using that one? Two iron. Ping I 2. 
one iron. Now, some people watching this have probably never ever seen or hit a one iron, but yeah, I could never hit one either. Mizuno TP11, two iron. Only use I'd have for that now is probably putting a little bit of butter on my toast in the mornings. Look at that, that's got to be the oldest two iron I've ever seen. Hand forged. Oh, look at this. Wilson Staff one iron. Absolutely beautiful. That is definitely, oh, you'd cut yourself shaving with that one. Titleist DCI 990 2 iron. It is amazing the things you find, isn't it, when you're at home? A bit bored. Still haven't found that pump. Right, no run for me, but I'm going to get on the bike now. Let's just head over to Dave and um, see what stretches he's got for us today. Hi guys, Goal Performance by Dave Fuge here. Coming live from my front garden yet again. Isolation, you know how it is. So today we're going to do a dynamic pigeon stretch, okay? We're going to help to limber up those glutes, okay? So, press up position. We want to try and get your knee in between your hands, but on the side. We put all our weight onto that leg. We're going to drop down and try and get our chest to knee. Hold flat split second, then push back up and change sides. Aim to do two sets of 10 reps and let me know how you get on. Swing speed golf training. Still got the 100 gram weight on this one. Remember, two weeks, 100 grams, then move up to 150 and then the 200. So it's a six week program. Saw an interesting one on Twitter probably a couple of days ago now, talking about the Ryder Cup and uh, saying about sort of, you know, captains getting all the picks. So you got, I think, Steve Stricker for the Americans and then uh, Podrick Harrington for the Europeans getting all the picks because of obviously the lack of golf being played. Be interested to know what you think about that. If the Ryder Cup even gets played. Put your comments down below. Whistling Straits I think this year or this September. So uh, and they're talking about maybe even pushing it back a year and then bringing the qualifying in as normal for maybe next year. Uh, yeah, be interested to know what you have to say about that. God. Oh. Right, speed training done. Let's now have a little look at our low point, shall we? Right, simple little drill for you today, working on low point. Now, what do I mean by low point? It's basically where the club starts to work its way down and then as it bottoms out at its arc and then starts to work its way up, the low point is down, right down here where it kind of bottoms out onto the ground. Now I've got a seven iron here. Now what we've got to try and do is get this seven iron to strike the ball right at the bottom of its low point. But there's going to be different ways in which you try and strike the ball. So what we're going to work on today is if we can move the low point from a forward position to a middle position and then a back position. And I've just got a small drill that might be able to help you by the time you get back to the golf course. It's just something you can work on at home in the garden. So get yourself set up to where you feel is the most comfortable with your seven iron. For me, it's just about three inches inside the left heel. My left foot kind of sprays out a little bit. We'll talk about that another time, but I push mine out a fraction more so it kind of looks like it's further back, but actually it's working off the left heel position. Then from a safety point of view, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the golf ball with a tee. So now all I'm doing once I've replaced that golf ball with a tee peg is now all I'm gonna try and focus on is trying to strike that tee peg on the way down into the golf ball. So really you should find that quite easy. However, there's a lot of people that tend to fall back on the shot or fall forward onto the shot. So have a little look at where you strike the tee and then where your kind of divot kind of starts or your scuff into the ground starts after or before the tee. So just be mindful of that. But ideally what you're trying to do in that situation is strike the tee and then see a slight scuff just after you've hit that tee peg. So if we look at this tee peg here where I've hit the tee peg, 
you can see that my divot just starts just after so I'm just kind of coming down clipping that T-peg and then scuffing it through as I come through from the shot there. So we're now going to move the ball position back and what I'm trying to do here if you think about it by pushing the ball position back I'd be doing this if I was trying to hit maybe just a little bit lower shot so my handle still stays forward into the normal position but I just push the head back which ho hopefully de-lofts the club as we come into it so I'm going to try and hit a little bit of a lower shot but again strike and understanding where the low point is is the key factor here. From where I am here now I'm going to use a fist from the center point which was here to now a fist to there which is basically where I'll put the next tee peg. So as normal I set up as if I was going to play the shot from again three inches just inside my left heel for me with a seven iron is perfect and then I just push the club back slightly keeping that handle slightly forward so it would as a normal position would be. Just push the head back so I'm going to try and strike that tee peg just as I start to work my way through. So you can see there now, this is where my original position was. I've just, there you can see my scuff mark in there and that's where that tee peg has come out of the ground. All my neighbors think I'm mad. They're all looking out their windows at me. So remember when you're striking it off the back position, so again, a fist back, couple of inches back, what you're trying to do is you're still trying to drive forward. I don't want to see you kind of hanging back to try and get to that tee peg. I want you to try and learn to drive after the ball, but also just trying to get that low point a little bit further back. Hi, right, Charlie. I know, I, I'm, uh, you think I'm losing it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, but you're not. So. No, I'm all right. I'm all right, I'm just chatting to the camera. So next position is I need to get my tee peg now a fist further forward there. So just about there. So not too far forward, just a fist is just enough. Again, setup position really, really key here, making sure that the standard setup positions for the middle of the stance, or in my position, what would be my standard place for a seven iron, which as we said before, is three inches slightly further back of the left heel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel like from here, I'm going to chase after it. So I'm going to really feel like I can chase after it to get to that tee peg from here. Again, just moving low point further forward. So again, if you think about what I'm doing there, I am moving that low point obviously further forward, but as I'm coming through, I'm potentially delivering maybe a fraction more loft. So if I'm going to try and hit the ball maybe just that fraction higher, I'm going to push my ball position slightly further forward. But strike is so important, so you've got to learn how to strike it from those three different positions. Obviously the standard ones should be pretty straightforward for you, but moving the ball position back and then moving it forward is a key point that I want you to learn. It's all starting to get a bit battered up here now, but you could see there that that was where my kind of fist, my T position was kind of there, and then I'm really working it, so bang, hitting into that position, coming forward. So there's just a couple of little drills that you can do at home it's it's very very important when you're moving ball position back and moving it further forward obviously getting the lower shot from back and pushing it forward to hitting the higher shot you've still got to get a strike so this little drill is something that to be honest with you it's not something that I practice it's something that I've probably practiced as, as a youngster but it's not something that I've consciously gone outside and worked on hitting the ground or striking the ground but for those of you that have got a bit of time on your hands and have got a bit of space this is something you can definitely work on. Now think about this as well, it doesn't need to be just your long game. You can play with this with chipping. You know, if you're in the house and you're struggling maybe with a strike performance if you're chipping, just have a little play with moving your ball position around, keep the position where you would have centered and then move yourself forward and back from there. It's just something that might just be able to help your game. Right, we've got a lost ball, I've got to go and find it. It's over here somewhere, Daddy. Is it? Yes. Now it's broken, right? We got it, we got it. So there's a couple of little things to work on now with regards to your striking performance and your low point. It's just a simple drill if you've got a bit of space, like I said before, if you can do it with some chipping and then move into some fuller shots, that would definitely help you when you get back to that golf course. Remember, put your comments down below. Let me know how you get on with your strike performance. How does this drill work for you? I'd like to hear what you have to say. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good evening and uh, be safe.